Good evening, Mario, Magdiel, and Abigail. Welcome to today's class. How are you today? Oh, Magdiel has disconnected. Okay, he's getting back and I have Mario and Abigail. I don't know if you're just going to be listening. Hi, good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. How are you today? Are you um, at home already? Yes, I'm at home. Oh, that's but nice. It's, it's raining. Oh, yeah. It's raining I, yet. I, yeah, I, I saw that you were there in the meeting and then you got disconnected and now you were back again. That yes. means, yeah. What, what are you, teacher? Doing well. Um, a little worried about traffic <laughs> because it's getting worse. It's raining, and I'm worried because uh, my husband and my kids are getting home. They are in the traffic, and traffic is horrible now. But anyways, um, let's just have to um. Maybe it stopped raining somehow. It, they said that this is going. This was going to be a, a very hot uh, year with no much rain, right? Habían dicho que no iba a llover mucho, pero okay. Parece que sí. Maybe maybe says Moisés Urbina. Maybe that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always the opposite. <laughs> that's that's right. For some reason, I don't know what. Anyway, so, but let's begin. Uh, yesterday we were working in a, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, I don't know if you finished this exercise. I am sharing now. Okay, we were working in this one. Did you finish? Could you finish this exercise yesterday? No, yeah, teacher. Okay. So you did uh, the number one, two, three. How many did you complete? Do you remember? Okay, so we were uh, we were completing this. If you have not completed, uh, I give you some time for you to finish it. In the meantime, maybe the rest of your classmates are going to be joining us soon. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the meantime, you can finish this exercise. I'll give you some minutes.
we finished. Teacher, what is the part A? What is? Uh, no, yes, part A. Oh, your question is, what is part A? Yeah. It was in the previous slide. Let me get to it. Mm -hmm. The part A, it was this slide. We solved it yesterday. Uh, yes, I found it. Okay.
Are you ready? Okay, so number one, it's already done. Uh, number two, what do you have? So in uh, number one, it should be first of all, or to begin. Those are the two options. What about number two? Nobody has the number two? Number two can be first or first of all. First or first of all. Number three. Nobody has number three. I volunteer for number three. That is four options for number three. I think we have a could be furthermore. Yes, could be furthermore. Excellent. Another option. So that could be furthermore. That could be second, next, or in addition. What about number four? Options for number four. Second. Second, yes. That's a good option, excellent. Second, that could be next, furthermore, or in addition. What about number five? What do you have for number five? Number five. Number five could be similarly or likewise. Similarly or likewise. What about number six? Who has the number six?
That is contrast. If you see there, it said, it's true that cutting down on consumption is beneficial for the environment. We should keep in mind that cutting down too quickly could have a negative effect on the economy. So for those contrasting ideas, we can use. Hello. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, yeah. and finally, number seven. Options for number seven. Okay, well, Emmanuel. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I think to sum up. To sum up, excellent. That's good. Thank you so much. It can be to sum up or in conclusion. So those are the two options. Now we have a, in this exercise. I think it's pretty easier. Since what we need to do is to rewrite the sentences, replacing the underlined word with a word or phrase from the box. If there are two possible answers, you need to write both of them. The words that we have in the box are first of all, furthermore, in addition, in conclusion, likewise, nevertheless, next, similarly, to begin, to sum up, yet. And we have number one already done. The sentence, the given sentence is to start with. We need to change the phrase that is underlined to start with. We can replace this with a similar one, which is to begin and also first of all. And then the rest of the sentence is the same. Welcome to our seminar, giving your best presentation. So we rewrite the sentence, uh, substituting the underlined phrase, taking one or two possibilities from the box. Is the exercise clear? I think it is. We are going to do it in the main section because uh, many of you are just listening because of different reasons. You have reported via WhatsApp that in some some of your places it's raining. Some other are driving in traffic and some other are not very well with the health. They are sick. So yes, it, it doesn't have any sense to create breakout rooms because um, I think many people is just listening today. Uh, so that's why we're going to work here in the main section. So I'll give you time for you to rewrite the sentences. You can do it in your notebook if you want. And then we're going to check if you have any question, I'm here.
Are you ready to check? Finished? Do we have a volunteer for number two? Do we have any volunteer for number two? Okay, I know that you are, many of you are yeah, teacher. doing well. <laughs> yes, my dear? Could be also and for the month. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can use furthermore. And also in addition that you can use in addition and furthermore. Excellent, Martiel, thank you so much for your participation. Okay. Um, okay. Number three, any volunteer for number three? Volunteer for number three? So here are a few tips. Before anything else, outline your ideas carefully. You could use first of all or to begin in number three. First of all, underline, outline your ideas carefully. That could be one option. And um, let's see, number four. Make sure you have all your visual needs for your presentation. However, don't depend too much on pictures and charts. What you say is just important. So we need to substitute however. What did you use to substitute however? You could yeah, have this nevertheless or yet. Nevertheless or yet. Number five, don't rush the preparation of your material. In the same manner, give yourself plenty of time to become familiar with the information you want to communicate. What can we use to substitute in the same manner? The answer is likewise or similarly. For number five, it can be likewise or similarly. Then in number six, it says then practice the presentation a couple of times to, work, to build your confidence. What do you have? To begin. To begin, mm -hmm. teacher. 
Um, let's see. Next. Mm -hmm. That could be next. And number seven, to conclude, preparation, practice, and confidence are the keys to a successful presentation. Yes, excellent, Abigail. To sum up, or in conclusion, so those were the two options that we had to sum up or in conclusion. Okay. Now, uh, with this, we finished the practice for the connector or the transition work. And we'll continue with a review for the two, well, the phrasal verbs can be like two words or three word phrasal verbs. We're going to make a short review. We have a presentation here, just let's allow it to load. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can hear it. Hmm. I'm not showing that a screen. I think I found a way to share it. Let's give me one second. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. Phrase of verb, thank you so much for confirming someone. Phrase of verb, separable and inseparable. Uh, some of you were asking if we can separate, if we cannot separate. In the case of uh, some of them, yes, we can separate them. And we're going to watch some examples here. We begin this presentation, and as you could see, we're going to be talking, this is a cell phone helpline. Okay, look at this picture. What does this man say? They say, this is my first cell phone. I'm trying to figure it out. I looked over the directions, but I'm still confused. When I make a phone call, all the buttons on the phone light up and I don't know what to do. Help. And then say, every time I want to call up some on the cell phone, the phone cuts me off. I just heard the strange sound. I'm afraid this phone is going to blow up. Please help me out. Can you identify the phrasal verbs in this um? In these two short paragraphs, in the first one, we have a phrase over, figure out, look over. And then in the second one, we have call up, cuts off, 
and blow up. So you see, there you can, um, there are the phrasal verbs, they are highlighted for us to identify them better. Okay, transitive phrasal verbs. Most transitive phrasal verbs are separable, okay? This means that um, noun objects can go after the particle between the verb and the particle. So we have this, okay? You see, he can't figure out the instructions in this sentence, the object is the instructions. And we can separate this. We can't figure, and then we place the object, the instructions, and then at the end, the next part of the phrase upper out. So in these cases, we can separate them. Most of the two words phrasable, we are separable. Oh, what happened here? That says, be careful. If the direct object is a pronoun, it must go between the verb and the particle. Okay. I turn off it. That's incorrect. I turn it off, okay? En el caso anterior vieron que el objeto era un noun, era una cosa. Pero eh, si el objeto es un pronoun, si es un pronombre, este debe ir entre el verbo y la, en the particle, right? El verbo es turn y la partícula es off. Entonces el, el, el object tiene que ir en medio. I turn it off. Ahí sí no, no, no se puede poner junto. Ese sí tiene que ir separado en ese caso. Let's see next. It says usage note when the noun object is a part of a long phrase, we usually do not separate the phrasal verb. Okay. He charged the battery the handle the computer app. Uh -uh. So in this case, we cannot separate it. He charged up the battery and in the handle computer. Because um, the, the now object is part of a long phrase. Cuando es, uh, es largo, so yeah, no, no lo podemos separar. Let's see some uh, for these sentences about technology, for each verb, phrase of verb. Okay. So we have example, put together. Put together means assemble. It's difficult to, be, to put together a new device. It's difficult to put a new device together. Okay. En este caso, si dijimos que cuando el, el, el object es un noun, Sí, lo podemos separar. Es un, un, una cosa, algo. Yes. So, vamos a estar formando las oraciones acerca de la tecnología para cada uno de los phrasal verbs que tenemos aquí. Ya hicimos el primero que tenemos como ejemplo, que es put together. And el put together means it's a symbol. It's difficult to put together a new device. It's difficult to put a new device together. Or you can say it's difficult to put it together. It refers to the device. It's difficult to put it together. Now, let's, um, let's see. Close down by its Close by force. Switch on means start a machine. Number three, pick out, select, identity. Set up, prepare for use. 
turn off, stop a machine, look up, try to find. That, for example, we close down. The first would be, it's difficult to close down a new device. It's difficult to close a new device down. It's difficult to close it down. A volunteer for number two or unit time. Finish. Number two, switch on. Volunteer. Okay, for number two, that would be, it's difficult to switch on a new device. It's difficult to switch a new device on 
It's difficult to switch it on. Number three. Volunteer. Okay, as most of you are just as listener because of different reason, um, you can do it whenever you have a chance uh, so that you can practice with this uh, phrase over. So we're going to continue. Let's see. Transitive phrasal verbs. Some transitive phrasal verbs are inseparable. Uh, this means that both noun and pronoun objects always go after the particle. You cannot separate the verb from its particle. Okay, so for example, in this one, we cannot separate it. Um, that would be incorrect. Stan ran into his boss. Okay. Incorrect. Sam ran into him. Okay. A small group of transitive phrasal verb must be separated. For example, I have to do the report over. Do over in this case, yes, it, this one must be separated. It's never together. And we have some other examples of phrasal verbs with the meaning. See, carry on is to continue. Don't carry on a cell phone conversation during a wedding. That's very useful, right? The meaning of carry on is to continue. And as you can see here, that's inseparable. We cannot separate. And here we have some other example of inseparable um, phrasal verbs and their meaning. For number two, we have get out of, which meaning is benefit from, count on, the meaning is depend on. Number four, start over, which means start again. Number five, talk into, which is persuade. Number six, go after, which meaning is pursue. Uh, some transitive phrasal verbs are used in combination with certain prepositions. Uh, phrasal verb plus preposition combination is also called a three-word verb and it is usually inseparable. Let's see some example. Okay, I think I should drop out of this class. I can't keep up with new technology. Um, those are the, work, the ones that we were practicing. As you can see, they always, they go with a preposition. They, they are phrasal verb plus preposition and they are inseparable. I, you can see, I think I should drop out of, of is the preposition. I can't keep up with, and you see there, the preposition is with. inseparable. Let's see here. In this, well, we have to ask and answer the questions, but I know that you can hardly participate tonight, maybe one or two are participating. So we're not going to practice the ask and answer uh, at least for tonight. It's difficult for you to keep up with new technology. Why or why not? That's just one example. It's difficult to keep up with new technology because I haven't learned to use the old technology yet. And we have these questions, maybe you can practice them alone, maybe when you have a chance to. We have um, 
Have you ever dropped out of a class? Have you come up with any good ideas this week? What were they? Who do you usually team up with in a class activities? If someone makes a decision that you disagree with, do you still go along with the decision? When do you get out of your classes? When was the last time you followed through this with something? What was it? So now you have these questions. You can answer them whenever you have chance and time. And now we continue here. Some phrasal verbs are intransitive. This means that they do not take an object. Dad, hang up and call the fire department. So as you see, there is not an object. No hay nada que reciba la acción eh, de hang up después del verbo. So a eso se refiere que son, eh, no, no toman un objeto, no hay object después de él. Um, hold on, hang up. So those two are some of examples of intransitives. Son, hold on, I'm busy talking on the phone right now. Okay. And we have some other examples of intransitive phrasal verbs. Um, run out is not have enough. That's the meaning of run out. That's another example. I think that she ran out of what? Paper, ink? Let's see the example. Last week, the photocopy machine ran out of toner. No more toner. <laughs> we have some other examples. Close down, stop operating, call back is return a call, blow up, explode, Number four, play around as to have fun. Number five, empty out as to empty completely. Number six, sign up, register. And this is the end of the presentation about phrasal verbs. Um, I'm going to send it to you WhatsApp group. Maybe you want to check it sometime and complete the exercises whenever you have a chance and the time when you are available. I'm going to check attendance because, uh, yes, we need to register uh, every night in our files, the attendance. I'm going to be checking also the, um, the chat in case that you can reply via chat. Or if not, I'm going to be checking also to see if you're connected or not. Um, okay. Abigail Elizabeth? Abigail Mejia Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Carlos Alberto Santana. Present, please. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Present, teacher. Thank you. Cecia Noemi Ramos. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Gerson Alexis. Present. Thank you. Gertrudis Aymara. Hazel Vanessa. Present. Thank you. Julissa Yamile. Julissa Yamile. 
Carla y Vania. Thank you. Luis Javier. Thank you, Carla. You're having internet issues now. Magdiel Esaú. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto. Present teacher. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Present. Thank you. Samuel Antonio. Thank you, Samuel. Santos Cristina. Victor Noé. That's it for attendance. Thank you, Christina. I'm going to share the presentation so that you can check it back. Okay. Here I'm sending the presentation about the appraisal verbs that, that you can handle in your Yes, Santos, Cristina. Sí, la escuché, Cristina, ya le puse ahí. Cecia y Elizabeth también. Okay. All right. Now that we review about the phrasal verbs, we have a couple of exercises here. Okay. We already watched the PowerPoint presentation, so we can move to this. Uh, starting point, we are going to read a couple of uh, sentences about friendship. Can you explain what they mean? What other statement would you add to the list? We have, what is a friend? That's the question, what is a friend? Number one says, a friend is someone who brings out the best in you. Number two, good friends are always happy to help you when you run into a problem. Number three, a friend is someone who shares you up when you're feeling bad. Number four, true friends don't drift apart even after many years of separation. A real friend will always stand up for when for you when others are putting you down. Number six, never be afraid to open up and ask a friend for advice. A true friend will never turn you down. Number seven, make new friends, but hang on the old ones. Number eight, Good friends are hard to come by, harder to live, and impossible to do without. As you can see, in every of these sentences have phrasal verbs. Number one, for example, a friend is someone who brings out that best in you. Bring out is a phrasal verb. Okay, um, so the idea of this is to say what do we think that these sentences mean. For example, uh, the first statement means a friend inspires you to show all your positive qualities. 
bring out would be show, right? In number two, good friends are always happy to help when you run into a problem. The phrasal verb there is run into. In number three, the phrasal verb cheers up. In number four, we have drift apart. Number five, stand up. Number six, open up. Turn down. Number seven, hang on. Number eight, come by. Do you have any question about those phrase verbs? Or do you want to share what do you think those sentences mean? Any of them? No? Teacher, mm -hmm. um, honestly, and uh, this topic is like difficult for me. The phrasal uh, verb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we need to make first the meaning of them clear. For example, uh, let's see, number three, maybe you know that one, sure up. Okay, it's sure up. Do you know the meaning of sure up? En el numero tres? Sure you up. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. Cheer up es hacer que alguien se sienta mejor, eh, animado, feliz. Eso quiere decir cheer up. Okay. Cheer someone up. Es de darle ánimo, hacerlo sentirse mejor, hacerlo sentir feliz. Y otro que creo que pues puede ser un poquito difícil de entender qué significa... Eh, drift apart que es el número cuatro a true friend don't drift apart even after many years of separation drift apart es como gradualmente irse desinteresando mostrar desinterés apartarse eso es drift apart eh, Y el último, maybe, come by, que es eh, relacionado a obtener algo, right? Come by. Mm -hmm. Good friends are hard to come by. Entonces, ahí nos está diciendo que los, es, los buenos amigos son difíciles de obtener. Eso es come by. Entonces, Dice, ellos tienen como, si uno dice come por separado, significa venir, ¿verdad? Y by también tiene su significado bien diferente aparte. Entonces, no los podemos traducir. Ellos tienen su propio significado, así la palabra junta. Son como ya eh, frases armadas. Uh -huh. Entonces, es importante saber primero qué significan para poderlos usar. Ahora, siempre cuando veíamos la presentación y se refiere a un object, el object se refiere a quien va dirigida a la acción, quien recibe la acción. Eh, por ejemplo, veamos uno que tenga un object ahí. Ajá, a friend, la número tres, por ejemplo, a friend es el sujeto. El sujeto de esta oración. A friend is someone who shares you up. El objeto eres tú. Porque él es a quien eh, eh, es you, el que está recibiendo esa acción 
de parte del sujeto. El sujeto va a animarte a quién, a ti. Tú recibes la acción. A eso se, eh, eso es a lo que se refiere el objeto. Eh, o a quién va dirigida la acción o quién recibe la acción. Uh -huh. um, y eso es básicamente creo que la parte más difícil como de, de, de comprender ¿verdad? los significados y qué es cada parte de cuando hablamos de objeto, etcétera. Pero sí, eh, no es, eh, creo que los términos gramaticales es lo, lo más difícil. Pero vamos a seguir practicando. Por eso quise repasar los phrasal verbs el día de ahora. Eh, vamos a hacer el otro ejercicio. Ya les comparto. Teacher, one question. Mm -hmm. What could be the best way to learn more phrasal verb? Es practice, es práctica, solamente practicándolos. Eh, por ejemplo, vaya ahorita, digamos, eh, tengo estas oraciones aquí, cada uno tiene phrasal verb, ok. Eh, tengo que hacer oraciones para memorizarme por lo menos los que yo considere que me pueden servir más. Por ejemplo, bring out es como sacar. Ok, y dice un amigo es alguien que saca lo mejor de ti. ¿eh? Um, entonces, eh, es bring out. Entonces, yo me pongo a hacer oraciones con bring out. So, porque es como un bien, bien útil. Eh, bien, lo, puedo, lo puedo utilizar como en el, el día a día, ¿verdad? Um, quiero ver, run into. Eh, el run into es como estrellarse o, 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 o encontrarse con, con algo, ¿verdad? Run into a problem. Eh, si se fija, quiero ver en la presentación, creo que puedo, puedo volver la new shirt. Ya se las mandé, ya la tienen en el WhatsApp. Aquí está la presentación. Ay, ay, ay. Print share hat stop because it's closed. Ok. Un segundo, tengo que abrir otra vez la presentación. Este, ahí está acá. Y ahora. Oh, ok, está viendo ahorita la presentación de los phrasal verbs. ¿Sí la puede ver? No, teacher. No, teacher. No, okay. no, teacher. Los archivos estamos viendo. Okay. ¿Y ahora? Ahí sí. Ok. ¿Mm? Ok, aquí está, por ejemplo, este run to. Ahí está. <laughs> ok, Sam run to. Run into his boss. So you say run into es como eh, golpear, um, golpear, chocar, estrellarse, etc. Y ahí tienen el ejemplo con el dibujito. Um, y pues ahí está la, la... 
las explicaciones. ¿Qué nos dice que son, ok, transitivos, phrasal verbs, son inseparables? Quiere decir que ambos, el nombre y el pronombre de los objetos siempre van a, después de la partícula, ¿verdad? Que eso es, la partícula es lo que va después del verbo. En este caso sería into. Um, no se pueden separar de su partícula. Entonces, ahora que hace que el run into es un verbo que no se puede separar y que también significa como golpear, chocar con algo, eh, podemos decir um, hacer más oraciones con run into. Um, por ejemplo, I was having a coffee and someone ran into the glass door. And it was difficult for me not to laugh. Okay. Entonces, yo estaba en una cafetería cuando alguien chocó con la puerta de vidrio. Someone ran, to in, ran into the glass door. Y fue difícil no reír. It was difficult not to laugh. Okay. Entonces, ya hice una oración practicando el running to. Okay. Y así puedo hacer más chocar con algo, chocar con una persona. O golpearse, vea. Es, eso es como estrellarse. Uh, y aquí tenemos otros. Uh, Transitive verbs must be separated. Dice que es un pequeño grupo de los que deben de ser separados. Entonces, con estos que tengo acá, como ejemplo, do over, ese no lo o tiene que ser separado. I have to do the report over. Y aquí tengo otros ejemplos de los que eh, no se deben separar. Aquí tengo los ejemplos con el significado. Carry on, por ejemplo, es continuar. Y ese no lo puedo separar. Ahí tengo el ejemplo. Don't carry on a cell phone conversation during a wedding. Okay. Eh, entonces ahora puedo ya hacer más ejemplos usando carry on. No lo debo de separar y ya sé que significa continuar algo. Y tengo un ejemplo ahí como para hacer más ejemplos similares. Entonces, eh, quiero ver. Get out, count on, go after. De aquí quizás yo practicaría unos cuatro que siento que los puedo usar bastante frecuente. Y así los que ustedes consideren más útiles son los que pueden eh, practicar haciendo más oraciones escribiéndolos, buscando el significado. Eh, veamos, voy a buscar uno en Google. Ok, puedo compartirlo. Déjeme ver. Ay, ya pueden ver mi pantalla, ¿verdad? Ok, si ¿sí ven la pantalla. Estoy en Google. Can yes. you see the screen? Ok. Yes. Entonces, yo pongo el verbo run into, meaning, que es el verbo que acabo de ver en la presentación. Digamos que el ejemplo que está ahí, no, no sé, no me gusta, no me queda muy claro. Run into y le pongo meaning por el significado. Lo primero que veo aquí es lo de Google. Eso no lo quiero. El traductor de Google no lo quiero. Entonces tengo aquí. Estos dos diccionarios son los que yo más uso. El, el Cambridge y el Macmillan. Esos me gustan. Eh, los uso y los sugiero. Porque si yo me voy al Cambridge. Eh, ahí me dice run. Into something or someone. Me dice que lo puedo usar. Eh, run into something para algo o alguien. Y me da aquí la pronunciación. Eh, entonces, puedo eh, escuchar cómo se pronuncia aquí. Run. Run. Eh, y luego into, ¿verdad? Ahí lo tienen separado. Y se pueden los tiempos que están acá. Me da la pronunciación del Reino Unido y la americana. Entonces, aquí tengo más... Eh, I have to break suddenly. 
and the car behind ran into me. Entonces aquí tengo un ejemplo más claro. O sea que run into siempre es como darse con algo, chocar con alguien. Eso significa run into. Veo que dice que tuve que frenar de repente. I had to break suddenly. And the car behind me, el carro que venía atrás, chocó conmigo. Run into me. Oh, he ran his motorcycle into a tree. Chocó con eh, su motocicleta en un árbol. Ok, y aquí veo más ejemplos. Run into someone. Ok, chocar con alguien. Y aquí me da más ejemplos, más ejemplos. Y esto es con el Cambridge. Si me voy acá al de Macmillan. Run into me dice que es un phrasal verb, transitive. Eh, definiciones tiene tres, ¿verdad? To hit or to crash into something. También sabemos que puede ser que golpeemos o choquemos con alguien, no solo con algo. Eh, ¿Y aquí nos da más? Sinónimos, accidentes, etcétera. Colocations, etcétera. Me gustó más el Cambridge. Entonces me quedo usando el Cambridge, pero ya curo cielo dos. Usualmente el Cambridge es el que me gusta más usar. Así que eso les puede ayudar quizás. Recuerden que eh, eso se trata de cuánto le, 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 le pongamos, ¿verdad? Entonces si siento que los phrasal verbs me cuestan y lo que me pregunta cómo puedo hacer para poderlos asimilar y usar, en mi caso... Eso me sirvió bastante cuando estaba aprendiendo a eh, buscar ejemplos en diccionarios inglés-inglés como este, porque si uno se va de un solo al traductor, el traductor a veces no es muy preciso y traduce las palabras como por separado. Y ya vimos que en este caso no funcionan así. Los phrasal verbs no podemos traducir palabra por palabra. Y aunque eh, ellos son ya como frases armadas, eh, y así armadas, completas, es que tienen su significado. Por eso les recomiendo no usar el traductor de Google, sino que buscar diccionarios. De preferencia, los dos que les mencioné, el Cambridge y el Macmillan, porque le tiene pronunciación, le tiene ejemplos, le dice qué es la palabra que usted está buscando, le dice si es adjetivo, si es noun, si es verbo, el significado, y le da ejemplos más claros. No sé si con esto le ayude un poquito. Espero que sí. Ok. All right. Uh, next part, it's a listening. Lo otro que teníamos por acá es un listening con lo que vamos a seguir eh, en el tema. Ok, tenemos un mes. Ok. Um, listening and speaking. Friendship among women and men. We're going to listen to Professor um, talk about other Deborah Tennis ideas, intense options. What is the main difference between friendship among men and friendship among women? Aquí estuvimos discutiendo como de acerca de la amistad con phrasal verbs. Eh, esto también lo vamos a estar utilizando, aparte de que pues es una oportunidad de practicar nuestro listening. Eh, y ahí pues en la, en la presentación tienen esta parte de acá. Ahí lo tienen para que ustedes lo puedan, si lo imprimieron, lo pueden trabajar desde ahí. Y si no, escribir en su, um, en su cuaderno las respuestas. Voy a compartir el audio. Déjenme chequear. Ok. Compartir el audio primero para la parte A y luego para la parte D. Listen to a professor talk about other Deborah Tens ideas. In Tens opinion, what is the main difference between friendship among men and friendship among women? Unit 1. Relationships. Lesson A, page 2, exercise 2, 
Friendship Among Women and Men, Part A. Listen to a professor talk about author Deborah Tannen's ideas. In Tannen's opinion, what is the main difference between friendship among men and friendship among women? All right, class. Um, how was everyone's weekend? Did anyone get together with a friend? Yes, Jessica. What did you do? Um, well, nothing much, really. Some of my girlfriends and I went out for lunch. We pretty much sat at a cafe and talked. Aha.、Uh-huh. What about? Um, you know, about nothing and everything. Um, let's see. About my sister's new baby and about when she could go back to work and, you know, who should take care of the baby. Things like that. Okay. Now, what about the guys? Any of you get together with a friend? Uh, well, uh, a buddy and I went to a ball game. Okay. What did you talk about? Uh, the game? I mean, you know, when we're at the game, we, you know, talk about the players and what's going on in the game and. Nothing else? Well, not really. I mean, were we supposed to talk about something? Perfect. Do you know what just happened, class? Jessica and George have just demonstrated for us the basic idea of today's lecture that friendship between women is different from friendship between men. This is an idea put forward by Deborah Tannen in her book, You Just Don't Understand Women and Men in Conversation. And that's what I'd like to talk about today. Now, Deborah Tannen is an author and linguist who has written about the relationships between men and women and why they often don't understand one another. According to Tannen, when a woman talks with a man, she often feels as though he isn't really listening or that they aren't really having a conversation, right? And a man often doesn't understand what the woman really wants from him. What's her point? He wonders. Where is this conversation going? How many of you feel that this sounds familiar? Okay, most of you. Well, Tannen points out that we can understand this difference in communication better when we examine how men and women view friendship. Okay, for a woman, Her best friend is someone she can be close with and talk to. They talk in detail about everyday events in their lives. They share feelings and secrets. Talking gives women a chance to better understand their world and themselves. For a man, talking is generally more straightforward. It's about giving and getting facts. Men generally don't base their friendships on talking, but on doing, getting together with buddies, playing sports, or going places. Men will often put down a woman's need to talk with her close friend about a subject in great detail. They don't understand how women can put up with such long conversations. Okay, so who here agrees with Tannen's ideas? All right, that was the listening. Now we're going to listen again for part B. And according to this lady, which of these things、uh, do male friends often do? You put M. And which do female friends often do? You write F. Write the color, red letter. If you have not printed the material, no worries. You can work in the notebook. Just write the number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then write M for male, F for female.、Uh, what are the points that we're going to be paying attention to? Number one, are direct and to the point. Number two, discuss daily life at length. Number three, reveal private thoughts. 
Number four, prefer to share factual information. Number five, value activities over talk. And number six, talk as the way to better understand their lives. Listen again and write M for men and F for female. Unit one, relationships. Lesson A, page two, exercise two. Friendship among women and men. Part A. Listen to a professor talk about author Deborah Tannen's ideas. In Tannen's opinion, what is the main difference between friendship among men and friendship among women? All right, class. Um, how was everyone's weekend? Did anyone get together with a friend? Yes, Jessica. What did you do? Um, well, nothing much, really. Some of my girlfriends and I went out for lunch. We pretty much sat at a cafe and talked. Uh-huh. What about? Um, you know, about nothing and everything. Um, let's see. About my sister's new baby and about when she could go back to work and, you know, who should take care of the baby. Things like that. Okay. Now, what about the guys? Any of you get together with a friend? Uh, well, uh, a buddy and I went to a ball game. Okay. What did you talk about? Uh, the game? I mean, you know, when we're at the game, we, you know, talk about the players and what's going on in the game and... Nothing else? Well, not really. I mean, were we supposed to talk about something? Perfect. Do you know what just happened, class? Jessica and George have just demonstrated for us the basic idea of today's lecture, that friendship between women is different from friendship between men. This is an idea put forward by Deborah Tannen in her book, You Just Don't Understand, Women and Men in Conversation. And that's what I'd like to talk about today. Now, Deborah Tannen is an author and linguist who has written about the relationships between men and women and why they often don't understand one another. According to Tannen, when a woman talks with a man, she often feels as though he isn't really listening or that they aren't really having a conversation, right? And a man often doesn't understand what the woman really wants from him. What's her point? He wonders. Where is this conversation going? How many of you feel that this sounds familiar? Okay, most of you. Well, Tannen points out that we can understand this difference in communication better when we examine how men and women view friendship. Okay, for a woman, her best friend is someone she can be close with and talk to. They talk in detail about everyday events in their lives. They share feelings and secrets. Talking gives women a chance to better understand their world and themselves. For a man, talking is generally more straightforward. It's about giving and getting facts. Men generally don't base their friendships on talking, but on doing, getting together with buddies, playing sports, or going places. Men will often put down a woman's need to talk with her close friend about a subject in great detail. They don't understand how women can put up with such long conversations. Okay, so who here agrees with Tannen's ideas? Okay, that's it. Could you complete the part B or do you want to listen again? Um, I need to listen again, teacher. Okay, no problem. Let's listen. Unit 1. Relationships. Lesson A. 
Page 2. Exercise 2. Friendship Among Women and Men. Part A. Listen to a professor talk about author Deborah Tannen's ideas. In Tannen's opinion, what is the main difference between friendship among men and friendship among women? All right, class. Um, how was everyone's weekend? Did anyone get together with a friend? Yes, Jessica. What did you do? Um, well, nothing much, really. Some of my girlfriends and I went out for lunch. We pretty much sat at a cafe and talked. Uh-huh. What about? Um, you know, about nothing and everything. Um, let's see. About my sister's new baby and about when she could go back to work and, you know, who should take care of the baby. Things like that. Okay. Now, what about the guys? Any of you get together with a friend? Uh, well, uh, a buddy and I went to a ball game. Okay. What did you talk about? Uh, the game? I mean, you know, when we're at the game, we, you know, talk about the players and what's going on in the game and... Nothing else? Well, not really. I mean, were we supposed to talk about something? Perfect. Do you know what just happened, class? Jessica and George have just demonstrated for us the basic idea of today's lecture, that friendship between women is different from friendship between men. This is an idea put forward by Deborah Tannen in her book, You Just Don't Understand, Women and Men in Conversation. And that's what I'd like to talk about today. Now, Deborah Tannen is an author and linguist who has written about the relationships between men and women and why they often don't understand one another. According to Tannen, when a woman talks with a man, she often feels as though he isn't really listening or that they aren't really having a conversation, right? And a man often doesn't understand what the woman really wants from him. What's her point? He wonders, where is this conversation going? How many of you feel that this sounds familiar? Okay, most of you. Well, Tannen points out that we can understand this difference in communication better when we examine how men and women view friendship. Okay, for a woman, her best friend is someone she can be close with and talk to. They talk in detail about everyday events in their lives. They share feelings and secrets. Talking gives women a chance to better understand their world and themselves. For a man, talking is generally more straightforward. It's about giving and getting facts. Men generally don't base their friendships on talking, but on doing getting together with buddies, playing sports, or going places. Men will often put down a woman's need to talk with her close friend about a subject in great detail. They don't understand how women can put up with such long conversations. Okay, so who here agrees with Tannen's ideas? Okay, now, um, let's see. Number one, are direct to the point? Men? Male or female? Men. Hmm? Men. That's it. Excellent, that's correct. Number two, discuss daily life at length. Woman? Yes, female. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Excellent. <that's right. laughs> Number three, reveal private thoughts. Mm -hmm. Quienes revelan pensamientos y cosas bien privadas. 
reveal private thought. Is it male or female? Female. Yes, <laughs> correct. Female. Number four, prefer to share factual information. Males. Excellent. Yes, male. Number five, value activities over talk. Valoran más las actividades que puedan hacer juntos que las pláticas. Man. Of course. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You, you really enjoy having a soccer match with your friends, watching a soccer match, um, yes, playing video games. Yeah. No, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, only when you are married can understand you can, you can uh, uh, prefer the activities over talk. Uh, activities over talk. Yeah. Yes. Any kind of activities, including the, the house activities. Mm -hmm. The women. together. Yeah, yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, but the women love. Together. But the women uh, love to talk about this, but not do it, this this kind of things. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> talk as a way to better understand their lives. My God, in my case, male. You think male, okay. In, in my case. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yes, it, it's uh, according to it's the- It's is It's female. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but yes, it, it, that is according to the author, but in your case, you think that is male. Yeah, in my case. Yeah, that's a valid point. <clears throat> that's really valid. Okay, uh, so that was nice that you um, you get the listening, you get all the answers for almost all correct. And yes, that's nice because I think that listening for, for my opinion, listening is the most difficult skill to develop, but you did it great. Yes, you did a very good job with this. And as you could hear, while the author was speaking, she was using a lot of phrasal verbs. And um, we are going to um, maybe do more exercises on this topic. And yes, I have some explanation here. Uh, there is more. If the presentation was like not really helpful, um, si sintieron que la presentación tal vez no fue tan de tanta ayuda, aquí tenemos eh, más eh, información de los phrasal verbs. Eh, a phrasal verb is a verb plus a particle. Es un verbo con una partícula. Entonces ahí vamos entendiendo más cuando dicen que sí se pueden separar de la partícula o no. Yo creo que también eso es lo que nos pone así como un poquito eh, saber qué es qué, qué es un objeto directo, qué es una partícula y así todo eso. Entonces eh, lo vamos a seguir practicando y explicando. Um, por lo menos estos que están acá pues son eh, bastante útiles, más los que vimos anteriormente como put up with, come up with, etc. Eh, pero sí, están también por acá y los vamos a seguir eh, reforzando. Y lo que les decía, the meaning of a phrasal verb is usually different from the meaning of its part. Es usualmente diferente de, del significado que tiene cada eh, parte. So, separable phrasal verbs. Los, los phrasal verbs que son separables Pueden tomar un objeto antes de la partícula. Ya dijimos que objeto es lo que recibe la acción o quien recibe la acción o a quien va dirigida eh, la acción. Okay. 
Y la partícula, pues, es lo que está como si es bring out, el verbo es bring, la partícula es out. Si el verbo es share up, share es el verbo, la partícula es up. Y así vamos a ir comprendiendo a qué se refiere que si eh, estos nombres gramaticales, que creo que es lo que más nos confunde. Eh, entonces dice que so, los separables pueden tomar objetos antes de la partícula. El objeto, si el objeto es un pronombre, siempre aparece antes de la partícula. Si es un pronombre como I, you, it, etc., Siempre va a ir antes de la partícula. Quiere decir, va a ir como separado, ¿verdad? Um, pero bueno. Ah, creo que por ahorita, les, esto lo tienen en, en la presentación. Lo pueden eh, repasar. Buscar, como les decía, el significado de ellos. Bring out, share up, run into. Eh, así como hicimos con run into en el diccionario de, de, de Cambridge donde vimos el significado y ejemplos. Eh, pueden hacer eso pues en algún ratito que tengan tiempo. Yo sé que es viernes. Ha sido un poco raro este viernes. Muchos han estado ocupados en el trabajo, solo como oyentes. Muchos han reportado están enfermos. Eh, otros en tráfico, etcétera. Pero pues qué bueno que es. Siempre con el compromiso de conectarse para eh, cumplir con su mínimo requerido de asistencia y que no les perjudique. Ahora pues les queda nada más reforzar eh, lo que se ha visto en clase y verlos pues ya el, el lunes esperando que la situación esté mejor. You have a little hospital here, teacher. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's flu season. Yeah. yeah. It's not winter, it's not summer, it's flu season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But a radical season. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I hope that you get better soon. You better drink lots of liquids, hot tea, um, water. Cool wine. beer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? If you're not uh, having antibiotics, yeah, I think that you can have a cup of beer. So thank you so much for joining. I hope that you feel better and see you on Monday. See you on Monday, teacher. Glad to see you. Have a good night, Good to teacher. see you on Monday. Bye bye.